use it as an off-leash place. We'd like to bring it back into on-leash because of the, of the wildlife issues that you mentioned. Once we have signage there, and once it's clearly not just an abandoned area, but a city area, there can be more enforcement when there's posting there and whatever to, to protect wildlife. Again, I think that's, in, um, that's consistent with the, with the conservation um, areas. The, the cap is something um, that uh, you'll see if you read the details of the plan, that is only mowed twice a season, partly <coughs> for protection. There's no intention to put anything on the cap other than the trail around it. The safety of the cap has all to do with not building anything or punctuating anything into it, even, you know, even signage, and it's why we want to take down the fence as well. Um, that's... I guess my question, if they could answer those, was um, the, uh, was there a butter in the committee? You know, there are only a few direct butters on that property. I live in that neighborhood, as as you know, and um, have used that property, and I'm pretty close to that. I was on the committee, um, so I think probably I was the closest person who lives to it. You've heard Re Rod Street reference. Certainly aware of the traffic issues in that area, which were made worse when, you know, Sagamore was under construction. I think people really suffered from that. I, I think the great deal of the traffic in our area um, and the problematic traffic actually has to do with the Clipper home. Um, and the speed of traffic has to do with the Clipper home, which you can see by shift changes. So one thing I will ask public works to do is to see if it is feasible to be able to put a sidewalk on that street or a bike lane on that street. It is narrow. I don't know if it's feasible, but we had people ask for that, just as they have in other parts of the city to improve um, pedestrian safety. Thank you. I have a um, couple comments. Assistant Mayor Swain, Council is Lamb, Wogan, and Spear. Yeah, I answer some questions. Sure, there are a couple of questions up in my questions about um, Councillor Kennedy talked about deer runs uh, regarding um, development and, and uh, preserving the wildlife. The, the thing that we that we're proposing uh, in no way would inhibit any of the wildlife out there. We were very specific about that when we looked at the we looked at the vision statement and you look at the list of activities that we have supported. Again, we made sure every activity had uh, was complementary with the vision statement, which includes deer and all other kinds of wildlife and plant life, which uh, even though they move a lot, can still still important. And um, again, our proposal conserves um, preserves some of the sensitive plants, which right now um, are not being protected. Um, there was a question from Councillor Shaheen about what is the measured impact. Opening up this parcel, we don't know. Uh, we haven't again. We didn't expend any funds. We don't know the exact number. But one of the things that um, we were hoping for was we looked at all the parcels citywide, and one of our messages has been one of the challenges we have right now with some parcels is they get the intensity of use because people know only about one parcel. We're hoping that by opening up this parcel and promoting the Great Bog and promoting all the other uh, passive uh, open space that the city has, uh, we can distribute the passive recreation uh, energy that people want to expand across the city. And so actually we're hoping that uh, we're going to pass the baton to the, um, we're hoping we envision a conservation commission and maybe the rec board and some um, metamorphosized capacity over the next couple of years to take on the role of park stewardship citywide. I, and I realized it was one other thing that wasn't answered, which is about the Urban Forestry Center and the hours. And that is something that um, is interesting because if you remember when we tried to address having hours in city parks a couple years ago, and there was a real question of whether from a, a I don't know, right to use or whatever point of view as a city we could do that. Um, there's difference of opinion on the committee, what we could do feasibly there. I think it's worth exploring further. The Urban Forestry Center is not owned by the city, as you know, so they have a, they have more, um, more flexibility maybe in what they can do in closing their, their lands. It would be akin to us closing a street at night. And so we didn't, we ended up feeling we really wouldn't be able to go there. Thank you. We were not in favor of any lighting um, there, so. Uh, yeah. This is amazing.
Right. Thank you, Donna. The, um, there's a lot to like in this uh, in this plan and master plan, and a lot of good people have done a lot of excellent work um, on this. I'm concerned about mm, the process. Um, I did a neighborhood walk on Jones Avenue in the middle of the summer um, and went into much of the area. It wasn't my first time. Um, back, I'm 68, when I was a little pup, 12, 13 years old, some 55 years ago, I used to, uh, with friends from the North End, um, camp in that area. We hike up at the end of Union Street, go in with the uh, Edgewood is now, the Edgewood Nursing Home, and, and walk deep into the woods and uh, go on some of the trails. Um, they were used by the high school at that time um, and where the, the old dump was. My father and I used to visit that dump when he had uh, things to um, throw away. It was an open fire dump back uh, in the late 50s in the 50s and 50s. So I'm quite familiar with the area. What I'm pleased about, and we, we should think about this when we use the word preserving something for generations. What I'm pleased about is some three generations later, 55 years ago, three generations later, that area is just about the same as when I went into it 55 years ago. There's something to be said for that. I mean, we don't have to use everything to its um, best purpose, or call it what you will, in Portsmouth, let's leave something for the future generations who come here. Um, because uh, um, the elastic theory is this, when you, when you start using something, when you, when you develop something, when you come up with a use, um, in five or 10 years, others come along and say, well, let's do a little more of this. Let's do something else. Let's, let's maybe put in a little vintage golf course. Let's maybe have a little disc golf. Let's uh, maybe use it for hockey. And you end up having more use, and then more use. It happened with neighborhoods like Manfield Road. It happened with neighborhoods like Woodbury Avenue, where I live now, which just 25 years ago, um, used to be quite uh, rural compared to what it is now. I'm in favor of growth. The opposite of growth is stagnation. Um, and I think that we need to continue to grow. We need to continue to develop. But when the neighbors of a, an area come to us and say, let's not destroy this neighborhood yet, I think we have to listen. We do a lot of talk around the campaign trail during the campaigns, saying that we want to listen to and protect our neighborhoods. Well, some are coming forward here, over 200 in petitions, and saying, well, wait a minute. So what I think we need to do on this in order to be responsible and to do this the right way is that we should not be in a rush to say yes to this vision plan. Um, the new city council is going to be starting just another one. Uh, we should ask the new city council to, which very well may approve this, but ask the new city council to uh, do a site walk when spring comes, because I think everyone on the city council should, should have that as part of their experience, and hold a public forum with not only the neighborhood, but with anybody who wants to come, very similar to what we heard tonight, and have a discussion about the vision of that area. I think that is the win-win. I think that there may be another need for preserving uh, that area in the form of making sure that the pollution from the cap is not going to go into the sidewalk creek. That is probably where we should be spending our money to come up with a barrier there as, as, as sea level rises. There may be additional problems there. What we don't need to do is come up with a grand vision to increase the use of that area. We should preserve that area and have it available, which it already is for people. I'll close by saying this. Um, we've seen this happen in other parts of the city. If we develop this, and that is the word that needs to be used on this because it's becoming a master plan. If we develop this, we make that entire area, Jones Avenue and the end of Jones, more commercially viable. We don't know.
know that it will always be the Elks Club. We could see somebody come in with a presentation uh, that the boards and commissions may well approve 10 years from now, five years from now, two years from now, 20 years from now, uh, realizing that that is an enhanced area. Um, it would be a great area for a resort, a hotel. I mean, you're in the middle of Portsmouth, but you're also in a very rural area. You've got the Sagamore Creek there, and now you have a well-used and attentive park area that's called the Sagamore Creek Park. And it becomes more valuable for commercialization. Then you have more development on Jones Avenue. Then you have more other development off of the high school. I think you have to be concerned about that because that's exactly what has happened. Let's learn from the past. It's happened in Banfield area, it's happened in Lafayette Road area, certainly happened in Woodbury Avenue area, happened in Maplewood Avenue area. It's, we're losing neighborhood and causing neighborhood by neighborhood. And, and Portsmouth is beginning in parts of the city to look like that. We'll go back to Council Dwyer for a second. Uh, before you put the nuclear power plant there, Jim, um, I would just like to say that's that the very, reason we're doing the reason the, the, the reason we're doing this is to create preservation for that area, so that there wouldn't be the kind of changes that you're talking about. That's the idea of having a plan that creates preservation for that area, as opposed to. Um, opening it up for other kinds of developments. That's the whole point. So I want to make sure that that point isn't, isn't lost here because the idea of having a policy that is adopted by the council of the vision and the guidelines for a conservation approach to that area is for protection. Council Hall and then Council Morgan. Which kind of sum up after that. Yeah, I want to just quickly thank the mayor for appointing the committee. I want to thank the members of the committee for what I think is very thoughtful report. The recommendations are uh, very sensible. Um, and uh, I would point out that six months ago, all nine of us up here voted in favor of endorsing the, this committee to look at a vision for this property. And that, that endorsement specifically included making it accessible to all for, among other things, balancing the waterfront access and preventing recreation activity. That's exactly what the committee has now done and is now recommending uh, back to us. Uh, yesterday, my wife and I went uh, for a walk on this property, and you drive up to uh, the, the gate at Jones Avenue. It's a 15-foot tall chain link fence with no parking signs on it. It's foreboding. It's discouraging. The only thing this report really essentially is recommending is to make this property, this beautiful property, view of the creek and woods more welcoming. As Allison Tanner said, it's just a question of making it more welcoming and a little more accessible. Now, you've heard a lot of overstatement tonight, from uh, both from us up here and in the audience, about how we're destroying a neighborhood and uh, wiping out species of things. That's all overstatement. But uh, it's just about making this property welcoming. I really am surprised we're even ha having this debate but the people who are going to vote no on this uh, have to tell us what they think is better than these simple recommendations. If they want to keep that 15-foot chain link fence there and discourage the public from using its own property? Do they want to study it further? Do they think that the, that the process this committee went through over the course of a year listening to the public and taking comments was not adequate? We want to continue studying it and continue the process. I really don't think so. But we, we unanimously voted for this committee to do just exactly what they've done, and we need to endorse it. Council Morgan. But though we have more information, it's our duty to look at information and ask the right questions and consider the right information. So I think we have that duty. The fact that we approved a couple of months ago doesn't mean that we should just, you know, let's approve, keep going, keep going, keep going. I just want to echo that I agree with, uh, with the system mayor's claim of these concerns. Um, one of the questions I had is, what are we promoting? What do we need to promote? People do know the area. Um, we are promoting more consumption, more, you know, why do we have to, you know, open an area to everybody to be there 24-7? Uh, See, if we're going to protect the wildlife, 
that can be 24-7. There is wildlife that moves in that area at night. How can, how can we think about that, allowing it and not thinking that it's not going to disturb the wildlife that we have in that area? That's one of the questions I have and the comments that I have to make. Um, and the traffic. We heard about, you know, I heard about parking space. I heard about parking. We should plan for and focus on, if we want to do, focus on bikers, pedestrians, and have very selective parking for handicapped and other people with disabilities. You know, I think the idea of people using the land is great, but we have to take um, cautious steps, including um, learning more from what the, what the water uh, and what the, what the gas is going to come back with, what the, uh, how David said was, uh, um, um, let's see, what you mentioned about, you know, the, uh, the toxics in, under the cap, you know, how, how uh, secure, secure the cap is. I think we need to learn that even before we proceed. So um, I think it is it is a, a big plan in theory, but I think we need to look more into the details. Thank you. Council Thurston. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I like the idea of access, so um, I'm freezing a lot of questions because I, I'm, I just see holes in, in the thing, and please take it as that. I want to see certain things addressed, uh, which is why I bring up these questions. But um, I, I have a I, I just have a comment and then two quick questions that might need to be answered. My, my comment is this notion that uh, more public access to an area will decrease uh, drug use in an area, I think it's all, all wet. I, I, don't, I don't think it, I don't, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that way. If you remember a year or so ago, we had a discussion on a Rock Street Park. Now that's right in the middle of town with lots of traffic around it. And we were having those kind of problems and we had to ask the police to monitor the area uh, because of the safety of, of residents in the area. And there were some issues that came up. I'm not gonna get into all the details. But that was right in the middle of town. And uh, we had um, those issues. So uh, the idea that somehow more traffic is going to decrease that effect, I, I think it is incorrect in, in my opinion. My two quick questions uh, are this. Um, uh, is there a report that says the cap is good or not? Is there, and the second question, similar, is there a report that says the surrounding grounds are, do not have toxic material in them? And I'm not just talking about the DES looking at the water, because maybe, maybe the water is not having a problem, but what about the grounds themselves? And is there a report, has there been a study, has there been measurements taken in those areas? Uh, certainly, certainly I, could, I could agree with this plan um, and the next council could take up these questions before anything goes further, but uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to know whether, whether these things are okay, otherwise we've got safety issues. So I'm gonna let that council speak with Dwyer. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let me answer the safety issues first. First, in any safety issue, if it's really an unsafe situation, what we should be doing is putting concertina wire around the whole thing and not letting anyone access it who's accessing it today. There are people, as you've heard, who access it today. So clearly, people have been using it for the past 30 years. No one's falling over dead. Uh, you know, that we know of. I could be wrong. So, but in answer specifically to your question, we, the cap is, uh, measured, uh, water coming out of it is measured um, on a routine basis. I don't have the exact numbers. I know David has better numbers than I do, but the 